Good afternoon, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to another exciting race of Free Enterprise. If you were looking to have a day with lots of races and lots of content, today is absolutely your day. And for this one, we've got at the two and two for Kind of Nerdy Housewife and uh, versus Penguinator, who is at the two one and tie. One of, I think, our one of two ties. Well, from the same match, essentially, this tournament, who uh, this is not an elimination match for him, um, but it is for kind of nerdy housewife. And uh, I am joined here by Baka Shinobi. How you doing, Baka? I'm doing right. And yeah, this is a bit higher pressure for one runner than, than the other. Kind of nerdy housewife needs to take a win and, or else she's unfortunately out of the running for brackets. And Penguinator, as you said, with that tie means he's not at two losses, but with how the bracketing works out, he will play against another two win runner. So Penguinator, a little bit more relaxed position, but he really don't want to go in with the minimum number of points into this bracket. So Penguinator is probably hungry for this win as well. And that is definitely going to be a rather interesting race we have between our two the DC runners. Yeah, definitely. That would that will absolutely be on the back of Penguinator's mind uh, going four and two or in his case, uh, three, one and one into the uh, bracket stage is actually pretty it's really difficult for those runners because the way that the math is kind of working out the um they want to cut to a top 32 and we're going to have like 35 or 36 so um there are going to be a few runners at the four and two level that are going to have to play an extra play in essentially and on top of that if you get seated against an opponent in the round of 32 where they have a better record than you, which I believe with the seating that that's the case, um, you will go into that round as the four and two player with an automatic loss in a best of three, so, which is honestly rather huge. So uh, yes, it's not the play in for Penguinator, but a lot of pressure is on to try to get to that uh, for Penguinator four one and one stage. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on going in, keeping as few losses as possible. And that is definitely something you want to go and keep down. I do see that we have a Cecil start or on KNH's side, a Gimli start. That is going to be. I really want to see who the other starting character is because if it's someone like uh, Sid, we're in great shape. Kane's pretty good. Eddie, mm, Young, those get a bit scary. Eddie can go and use a Dancing Dagger, but you might need to go and find some J items to carry you through early damage. Yeah, and interesting on this flag set, we have the C Neki flag set where our characters do not start with their typical equipment. They have no body armor at all, and they start with a random uh, weapon up to tier three, I believe, which for Cecil, if I get like a Cecil and Edward start, I'd actually look at my inventory, my equipment right away, because Edward can start with a dancing dagger, which is a great early game item, and Cecil can start with his best weapon, which is not really good, but for the early stuff, the black sword is really quite useful. Yeah, that um, black sword is a big boost. It's not only um, a whopping 20 attack damage higher than his standard shadow sword, it also gives plus five to pretty much all stats except for willpower. So definitely yeah, something nice to see. Yeah, particularly that agility, uh, really, really, really big, because you want to put uh, DKC in the middle anyways if he's doing your damage early. And I see we're kind of off to the races. We've got our power couple start with a Rosa, a Shura in the Bygan spot, and we're starting with a Baron key. Yeah, Shura's just saying, yeah, come come right in. I'll go and take you on any time, forgetting that um, Rosa might go and be rocking a Elven bow and a, a Rune Ring, so she'll have mage damage and mage defense it is a sure kind of like yeah here's the here's the keys to the house kids have fun <laughs> you know come back whenever you feel like it you know you're always welcome here just know that you'll be forced to face trial by combat because that's how summons go <laughs> right it's like you're always welcome back but also i will destroy you <laughs> i mean you gotta prove that you're worthy of coming into the house you're being sent in the world to go and show off how good you are now it's time to go and prove it. And we see that KH is going and uh, looting right outside of Baron. And to let um, uh, to let the audience know, and for VOD viewers later that might not see our Twitch chat, uh, we do know that Penguinator is having some uh, connection issues. But the way our race will work out, uh, there's not much we can do anymore on our end. Penguinator will play the race out, and we can see on his screen kind of being able to start here. So. Um, 
Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens there, but I, I wanted to make sure I made that call out. Yeah, Hangmater might go and have an ex uh, the delay. Instead of going and losing footage between when uh, his internet drops out, we'll go and just wait until this is the last point that I've seen. Now let's show this, so may end up with a longer delay. We'll point this out as best we can. And we see KNH going immediately to Damsian here. Probably can do a little bit of looting. Um, pretty early game routing, standard routing is to raise that hovercraft and um, either leave it there and kind of go do other, other things, or uh, she may want to go into Antline right away. I'd be, I don't know, it's interesting on this flag set. Uh, a lot of people really love Hobbs because with the uh, no free characters flag, uh, characters are kind of like pretty rare to come by so that Hobbs character check is pretty much the easiest thing you can do to get a character I see a lot of runners do that early too uh, but we'll see where KNH goes from here yeah and Penguin is checking that Hobbs summon that is mentioned and <laughs> Rosa is not starting with yeah Penguin just recently out Rosa's starting with a staff that is not the damage you want Cecil slid up free with a darkness sword a little bit more damage but that's not something you want to go and chew through several hundred HP with and oh, instead yeah. choosing to go to the watery pass where we have the T Wildish flag on, which locations will go and change their loot rarities. And in places that you do not have great incentive to go, such as this watery pass that doesn't really have anything going for it, we'll have better loot to go and get some people to pay a little visit. Yeah, this is the oh crap, Darkness Sword does like 40 damage a swing. I need help. Yes. Something. Literally anything. An archer bow, ice arrows. Um, because it's T Wildish, we could get good stuff like heroin robe. We could find a black sword. And if nothing else, it's money for us to go find a shop and buy an archer bow or a black sword. Yeah. And on the standard shops, we can't even find those elven bows I mentioned, which elven bows are definitely my preferred bow from shops just because they have good accuracy which is a rather surprising thing. Most bows have terrible accuracy and only Rosa's aim command makes them remotely viable. That's a really good point. And KNH going to Hobbs here does find uh, Rydia, I believe, and our Doctor Dialogue. And then resets because I believe she came to the same conclusion of that Penguin came to. I don't feel good about the options I have of trying to kill this boss. Mm. Penguin, meanwhile, did go and get a curse string from the back of the Watery Pass. That is a very helpful item for, you know, minus 15 stats. Uh, why is that helpful, Solaris? Oh, the curse string is such a useful item because of uh, weird black magic in this game that we call agility. Uh, basically, the long and short of it is that all of the speed of the enemy's actions and the character's actions are based off of the center character in your party uh, in a way where it sort of rubber bands everybody towards each other. Uh, so if you have essentially a fast, we call them an anchor. Uh, so a character in the middle that's anchoring the agility of everyone else. Um, in the overworld, if you have a fast uh, character, it will make essentially slow bosses even slower. And later on, which is much more important with that cursed ring, if you have a very slow agility anchor in the center slot, all of your party members are going to act at the same relative speed to that center character and the enemy that you fight will be acting much slower. They'll be getting uh, much fewer actions. And the cursed ring just says, whatever character you put in the middle has probably one agility, which is like about as low as you can go. Yeah, that is a very important thing. One of the things that really helps is that the game processes each side's actions con uh, consecutively. So. If all of your team's going at the same time or is at the same speed, you can just jam that queue of actions with, all right, I'm taking all of mine, and then the boss takes one action. I'm taking all my actions again, and the boss takes one action. And you can go and really stack that adventure into your favor, which you're not supposed to have, because uh, in the vanilla game, that, uh, that anchor is always Cecil, who I don't know about you, but I always leveled up Cecil, and he's a pretty speedy character. But in Free Enterprise, because it's the character in your center slot by default, you can go and do a lot of interesting shenanigans. 
Yeah, definitely. It's it, it's really interesting to me, actually. It just the way that this game happened to be programmed, um, you know, for what made sense at the time. This was the first Final Fantasy on a Super Nintendo game. And uh, yeah, heck yeah, I leveled my Cecil. I mean, he, he rocks an Excalibur if you want. He rocks a Crystal Sword later, of course. But um, yeah, in the randomizer, we take the encounters much lower level than you would in vanilla. So being able to eke out every advantage that you can, really, really important. Yeah, it's uh, there are some fights where it's super important and some fights that are not incredibly dangerous in the early game or in the vanilla game, excuse me, are much more dangerous and knowing that agility system can be a big game changer. Yeah, definitely. One thing about the uh, Q uh, hogging or you know whatever that we were talking about, um, one one option is at the plague fight, who's a character that casts a doom on all of your um, characters, and the doom count goes from ten to zero, and then that character dies. Well, if you have a berserker at um, where your agility anchor is super slow, they can Q jam essentially by always attacking. That character would actually never die. Yes, um, but me Go ahead. Oh, but meanwhile, we see uh, KNH kind of coming back here, taking on our Dr. Dialogue. Got through the first half of this fight, and um, really with the hit points split between essentially four forms in this boss, gets through it pretty easily now. Gets a good infusion of experience on all of her characters, and uh, more importantly, we actually have a third character. In Rydia, who might not be the best but if we find like an early summon can really be a powerhouse yep and one of the shops that penguin here checked i did see self summons for sale penguin didn't buy any he instead chose to go and buy notice a j item that cast ice one on all enemies but that is an item that goes and makes pretty significantly easier to use early game yeah definitely penguinator also bought some elemental claws uh, really good for Yang, who we like to call our Punch Mage, he, <laughs> a character who really benefits from levels and can deal with enemy uh, weaknesses to elements with Elemental Claws. So I think he picked up an Ice and a Thunder Claw. He, he also opened a Cat Claw, which is pretty funny in Atline because uh, between those things and the starting Strength Ring and Karate, that would make finding a Yang <laughs> like pretty tempting for me. I agree. I would definitely want a Yang at that point as a. Uh... That's just, you know, you don't have all the elemental weaknesses. It's definitely helpful. Yang will still be a bit low on the damage because, as you mentioned, Yang's damage goes up with his level. Specifically, he gains two attack power per level. He can't go and get the big spikes of damage that, say, Sid or Kane can get from finding a Blizzard Spear or an Earth Hammer. But for this party, I think it'll take steady damage at any rate. Yeah, really any additional infusion of damage at this point, whether it's J items like you mentioned. Oh, and oh, here's a fun one. We find Wyvern at the bottom of the outline. Uh, Penguinator does get his run buffer off and is able to put up a Star Veil on Rosa. I believe this will do enough damage, this Mega Nuke. Yeah, that will kill Wyvern. Cecil won't get the experience, but uh, DKC, when he turns into a Paladin, you lose the experience you got on him anyways, so... He gets through that nice and clean and uh, just gets an apple for his troubles. Uh, irony in the fact that the first two bosses getting um, key item checks are ones that you can kill without being able to do damage yourself, as Wyvern, as you saw, was taken down with the Star Veil, which cast a wall in the character and reflects back Mega Nuke. Meanwhile, Canon Energy Housewife has found King Queen Evelyn in Kabul, which. Um, this is a fight that's scripted to the point where the king will go and throw out some fire twos and some fire ones at some incredibly low magic power and decide, you know, we're not feeling this, we're going to head out later. And Kane is deciding, I don't want to wait that long. Cast Titan, backs out the king, and the queen actually has a script where the first turn after she takes after the king has died, it's just peace out herself as well. So, two kind of non DPS required bosses outside of that Dr. Luke. Yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword here. It's really nice to see them own uh, Kind of Nerdy Housewife finding the Twin Harp. That's good to know from the Fabul defense. It's something I imagine Pagnator will also do. Uh, so we'll get music. We know music is secured, essentially. It's always nice for us, and it's an objective. Kind of Nerdy Housewife just found a black sword uh, in one of the chests in Fabul. That's a really nice pickup for Cecil. Um, but yeah, about those free bosses, they're, they're, you really don't want to see them early because you'd rather them be like up on the moon where they're much 
the fights are much ruder, but with the party we started with, it, it's kind of interesting because you could have taken your party <laughs> to them essentially without doing anything because we don't have a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, with Kind of Nerdy Housewife finding Titan at Hobbs, Titan is a pretty decent summon. I think it's the best of like the like the tier two summons that she starts with when she becomes an adult, which is like Indra, Rama, um, Jin, it's the fire yep. one. Uh, yeah. So Titan will do a lot of work here, uh, and so will the Black Sword. So I think we have secured some overworld damage for the moment. Yeah, I think our uh, party is going to be doing pretty well going through the overworld. And then their canonary has with now heading into Antlion Cave while Penguin Energy is coming at Hobbs. Interesting to see where Penguin Energy goes next. There is an argument to skip Babool in the sense that there is a second set of checks there. They are the Sheila checks, which require you to have access to the underground. You go into Silk Cave, walk to the bottom, talk to Yang in the bed, go back to the Pabool, and in the vanilla game, you would get a pan from Sheila, which is the tool she uses to wake up Yang every morning. So you go back down to the bottom of that Silk Cave, you give Yang a good sturdy whack, wakes him up, kind of gently apparently, because he just kind of mumbles him. It's like, oh yeah, okay, I guess I'm getting up now. Bring the pan back to Sheila, and you get another key item. How bad of a headache do you think he has after being whapped upside the head so many times with a pan? I... Mm, I mean, he trains at Mount Hobbs, which is far away from the kingdom. I can't imagine he had to go and... He had to go make some good arguments. Maybe he's pretty hard-headed and is able to just endure them very well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is quite hard-headed. Thank you for that. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, able to take any 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 bonks of any sort, even the pan bonks. Um, but I love the fade Fabul early play because if Fabul defense doesn't have our access underground, you can skip it entirely. Now there are ways that you can get punished doing that, but it's um, if you feel that you're strong enough, you can go to ordeals instead, for instance, and take on those encounters on this flag set. It's not a bad play to make. Uh, actually, with Cecil, you know you want to do it anyways, because Mono Deals is where our Dark Knight Cecil will become a paladin, like in the vanilla game. And there's also our objective, our objectives defeat the elements, and there are two bosses at that Ordeals spot. So let's say Ordeals has the Magma Key, then you do Ordeals, you go, you use the Magma Key at Agar, throw it down the well to uh, get access to the underground. By the way, don't ask me how the, how the heck that works. You throw a thing in a well and the mountain explodes. It's just don't ask questions. Um, but that will let you go underground, do the self check Baka just mentioned, and then go back up to Fabul and you only have to do that once. Uh, so it's kind of a nice routing efficiency, but it, it's a bit of a gamble. Yeah. The other side is that I failed to mention this uh, Fabul spot does give good experience, which you might really want on this party. And Penguin also being up there, Twin Harp is. That, that being a required check is something that. It is objective number one. However, our runners are very likely to fade it because we don't have great physical damage and we really need physical damage to chew through the 6,000 damage there as that spot has exceptionally high magic defense in most any configuration. Yeah, definitely. It, it really... Um... It's like going to Fabul early or fading it. It's like dealer's choice to me. I think both options make a lot of sense. And sometimes you really do need that experience, especially if you have a Porum in your team. Um, if you do the normal routing at Lion, Fabul defense, or deals, um, I feel like she gets Berserk uh, after that first boss encounter. Uh, Porum being the other white mage who uh, has worth, worse stat growth and health growth, but gets Berserk early. And Berserk is a really powerful spell. Um, so getting the early experience does make a lot of sense. It's also good for Rosa to get a uh, cure two, though she gets that pretty early. Yeah, Rosa gets uh, cure two after one or two fights. She one fight she goes and learns life one, then cure two is very shortly afterwards. And we do see both runners coming up at her deals, and I definitely don't dislike this play. Penguin going in equipping a black sword. I believe you found a black sword. Oh. Yeah, he. I believe he accidentally sold the Black Sword. Oh, I was going to say, I know he looted that. Oh, no, he's doing like the three times over, like, what did I do with my sword? Uh oh. <laughs> well, if uh, Penguin decides to you know, make, do a bit of catch up on that, there was actually a second Black Sword on Mount Hobbs. So maybe if 
Penguin decides to loot here, might be able to go and pull a better, we Ooh, better weapon, but we do see Plague here, which Plague is not a character you want to see in a party that doesn't have a lot of damage. Yeah, so speaking of that Plague, when you don't have an option, so first of all, we don't have access to Berserk at all. I think maybe somebody found a Bacchus Wine, but besides that, um, we don't have access to the Berserk spell, and we're not at uh, what we call Relative Agility 1. Um, yeah, and kind of nerdy housewife taking an un unfortunate wipe here. You can see the problem. It's that the count goes on your entire party, and when your battle speed is really fast, like at battle speed one, it's um, you're kind of at a race against the clock. Plague deals no damage, but the count goes down very quickly, and you have to sort of manage this uh, game of like picking a party member up so that Plague casts count again, and then killing that party member again. And when you don't have a lot of damage, that can get really difficult to do. And we see kind of nerdy housewife not feeling too comfortable at the moment. Uh, okay, just taking an encounter to uh, knock down that Rydia. Yep. I'm guessing that she's gonna anchor with Rydia and try to slow down that fight. Cause I believe slowing down your anchor will slow the count down, right? Yes. Yes, the count works by every single ATB tick and advances once. So if you have a very fast anchor, it takes, it takes five ticks for your anchor to go and get a turn. If the anchor is very fast, then it takes, you know, higher, more ticks for your other characters to get a turn. So if you have other characters slower, it might take them seven or eight, potentially. But if you have a very slow anchor, then they will go and still take five ticks to get a turn. But you need to just be more than two and a half times the agility of the anchor to be what the maximum speed in the seed, which is what we call relative agility one, where it's one ATB tick for you to get a turn. If you go and are at that point and are just constantly spamming actions, the game needs a free ATB tick to check your statuses and uh, resolve them. We see Rosa coming through just sitting at zero while Cecil, also at zero, died because he didn't have an action queued when the game checked his statuses, but Rosa was just, I have an action, let me attack. I have a turn, let me attack. I have a turn, let me attack. And the game never got a chance to go and check. Are aren't you supposed to die at some point? Yeah, so we see the um, Penguinator kind of showing that uh, example out uh, pretty well here. And I see kind of nerdy housewife um, knock down Rydia just to make it easier so that uh, she could raise her kind of right after the battle started. Um, but still has that Cecil in the middle. And uh, I think she turned down the battle speed, so it'll make the fight more manageable. But yeah, we see how Penguinator used what Vaka just explained as an advantage to really get through the fights. And, okay, finding the dolls at the back attack is kind of rude here. I think, uh, well, this oh, Titan. Titan. Though. Never mind, we have Titan. <laughs> yep. Titan is a, uh... The dolls are one of those fights where I am very concerned about having AoE damage of some sort. Penguinator, I think, had a... Or k &H, excuse me, has a guy drum in their inventory. While we also have this Titan cast, Titan wasn't pulled out in play because Plague flies, so he's immune to earth damage. He is, however, because of that, also taking quadruple damage from arrows, so Penguinary swapping over the bow was to exploit that weakness, and KH, I believe, is also doing something similar. Yep, we see the Titan come out, Penguinator gets through that back attack. Easy peasy. Kind of nerdy housewife, unfortunately, took another wipe, uh, has come back at this at battle speed six. That will slow down the battle enough, I, I believe, for her to really get through this and uh, lean on that Rosa with the bow to deal uh, that extra damage to Plague, being weak to uh, bone arrows. Um, but unfortunately, um, I think isn't quite aware that you could put uh, Rydia in the middle to help slow down that battle, which just comes down to an experience thing or maybe not thinking of it. There is um, a different but, option. So, uh, what is our option? Oh, the Star Veil. The Star Veil. Plague needs to go and Count, like, Plague just wants everyone counting. Everyone has to go and count. If you're not counting, then Plague is upset. So if you have a Star Veil up, Plague's just going to keep casting that count over and over and over again. Alternatively, you can let him get count on all of your characters after you reflected it once, and if you're not at that battle speed one I mentioned, where if you're just constantly taking an action, the game never gets to check your statuses, you can go and kill Plague with count. Plague will die to it. Yeah, and that's a great way to take care of Plague at a very high hit point spot, or when you see Plague early, usually like in the Fae March. So the Fae March is a little tricky because those spots are 
both very, very fast. But a plague at like the Bahamut spot on the moon, for instance, that, that location's not very fast. It's pretty easy to get plague kind of below RA1 or above, you know, whatever the word is, um, to kind of do that reflect kill. Um, but yep. otherwise, yeah, we see kind of Nerdy Housewife just leaning on the fact that Plague will constantly be cast in count, and uh, it will take a little while, but she'll be able to get through this without any trouble now. Yep, that is definitely someone's going to help KNH, but unfortunately, KNH got to this Plague fight first. Penguinator got to the fight second, was able to adapt to it very quickly, and is through the fight getting into, you know, into this ordeals chamber and received the pan from here as well. That is... That makes going underground very convenient for Penguinator, but it also means that we only have, well, normally I'd say we only have one spot left, but we have, unusually, two overworld key items where we can have the Magma Key, or Magni Underground Access be at Baron End, Baron Castle Throne, or behind the Twin Heart. Yep, what I expect Penguinator to do is to go to Baron Inn. That's sort of the next place in progression of difficulty. Check the character there, who I believe we saw. The, I don't remember who uh, was there. I think somebody stepped in. And then uh, if you don't find your underground access there, you're kind of already conveniently at Baron Castle. I believe that comes in the vanilla game before the Twin Harp. We yep. also don't have a lot of physical damage anyways. I think maybe a fire sword was the best. Best. Oh no, we have a light sword. Okay, that's nice for a Cecil. With some experience, we'll be able to do pretty much all the overworld stuff uh, without problem. The light sword is a pretty powerful holy sword. It's the best one that you could pick up out of a random chest in this flag set. Yes, in the vanilla game, it is down in the uh, sealed cave behind one of the trap doors. It is Cecil's third best holy sword. Fourth best weapon, I believe. Ooh. Ogo Pogo is kind of rude. Ogo Pogo opens with double big wave, which chops off half your HP, and then we'll start punching you. It's really fast, too. So this spot, you're just going to go and well, it only has 400 HP, so Ogo Pogo goes down, but you're going to the second fight, almost guaranteed to be at half HP. Yeah, and that second encounter can be quite difficult if it's a really punchy, oh, like, this is Bygun. Uh, ah, yes, punchy. You want punchy? We have punchy. We have all the punchy. We have three punchy. <laughs> However, uh, with the rune rings, and uh, I think Cecil's got some decent armor on him. Definitely is still painful, but... So I wonder if that was a miss menu, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa, okay. Penguin oh, forgot he left the to bow. Power. Yes, he forgot he left the bow on Rosa, and instead wanted to use the power staff to bonk Cecil to go and get have a chance at getting a Berserk Brock. Yeah, again, Berserk being really powerful. It's a 50% uh, attack boost, I believe, for that character. And they get to attack, they get to act immediately when their Q is up, um, which is always going to be faster than what you could do manually. Yes. It is just their character's turn to come up, they're taking an attack. Their character turn comes up, they're taking an attack. They don't even need to wait for other characters who might be further ahead of them in the queue to come get back in the queue. They're just going to go and attack. And there goes Bygen. Penguin are rewarded with Porum and, and Excalibur because we don't already have enough power on Cecil. <laughs> How would you just like an immediate upgrade? Here you go. I'm waiting for the next check to give a Crystal Sword, to be honest. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess it's all ninja swords from here on out, and we never see an edge. I mean, that's how it always seems to be in my seeds. You never see edge, edge is a myth. Edge is a myth, but uh, Hanzo's steel is not. <laughs> right now, this team is shaping up very mage heavy, though Cecil is more than capable of carrying damage. I think once we go and get enough experience to turn on Berserk for our white, mage, white magic casters, I wouldn't be surprised if we make a run at Twin Heart. Oh, yeah. Earlier on this party, it was like, oh, wow, we need some help. There's like no damage on here. Okay, now we have Cecil with the light sword. Oh, now we have an Excalibur. We have our white mage already. I mean, those two could honestly just solo this game. The other three characters almost don't matter. It's nice to have Rydia as Titan for um, AoE. That is important at, at certain spots. Um, yeah, but but that, that uh, Excalibur is really freaking powerful. Excalibur is real good, and there's very few spites left where I worry about uh, having black magic damage, to be honest. Um, Demis is the main one, because that's one of the few fights you don't want to berserk. There's also... The D-Lunars, but the summons are going to go and trigger Remedy counters. 
Dark Imps. I would rather have Tella over Rydia, to be honest, because she can get... Because uh, Stone works on those Dark Imps and a number of other free encounters, so... Black Mage damage is actually coming... Bygan and the Dolls are the two big fights I want it for. The Sashura, I'm curious if we're going to see the Elven Bow get any use, or if we're just going to say uh, Cecil go Excalibur. It might be both. We'll see what Pegmanidae wants to do here. Well, Pegmanidae is choosing to pop a Star Veil, going to do what I believe is the typical safe play of double Star Veil to get Wall onto Ashura. That means that her heals will be reflected back onto your party and will not be going and uh, healing her, which is very important. It was a secondary way of dealing with this Ashura fight in the form of a strategy called Life Locking, where immediately after Ashura casts a spell, if you hit her, her random chance will go straight back to the spell she just cast. You have to be very precise and do it immediately after that spell cast keep it up so it's much safer to go and use these star veils right she rotates through a script where she'll cast i believe it's cure four and then cure three and then life one uh targeting herself and uh the intended vanilla way of dealing with ashura in the fame arch she's the queen of summon monsters is to cast that wall into her so that she reflects those cures those lives etc um, that's the safest way to deal with her. Again, right, like Baka said, the other is to kind of lock her into just life wanting herself. Um, but yeah, we see the walls come up. She doesn't punch very hard here. Uh, she'll always counter any action that you take against her, any damage with an attack. Um, she doesn't attack naturally on her own. Uh, but yeah, with that Elven Bow and Titan, yeah, we got through this pretty easy. Yep, that is, that Elven Bow is unique in the sense it's the only bow that adds a uh, racial type damage of against mages. Usually it's your arrows that are doing the bonus damage, but it is a very good and, item for that second round. Wow, another and it's quad point. damage. It's yep. quad damage, right? Yeah. Yes. And this is a consideration that comes up very often, but that quad damage is very helpful because it's applied before defense, which the best place, the main place it comes up is before magic defense in the twin heart because if you're doing elemental weaknesses that are quad damage bonuses you will go and multiply the power of the spell four times before the spell defense is applied which usually lets you do material damage and oh dear kind of near housewife has unfortunately taken a wipe to that bygan and baron in well penguin yeah. is... like we were saying that spot really really punchy and there's three <laughs> there are essentially three actors that can punch there mm -hmm. um but yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, that's I mean, that spot's terrifying. It's usually why I want to go and have some form of black magic, specifically Quake, or in our party's case, Titan, because you want to be able to go and knock down those arms. They might keep coming back, but if you can go and keep those arms down, that will go and prevent you from just getting completely destroyed. But k &H has found the lightsaber, which is very helpful. going to go and make that Cecil even stronger, while Penguinator found the karate fight on Baron Throne, this is a scripted fight if you have Paladin Cecil, because after the second kick, any attack from Paladin Cecil will go and make the Yangtze ouch. Well, like we said before, he's got a hard head, so he just like... He says ouch, but you know, it's nothing. But it's enough for him to just be like, you know what? I'm just going to stop. Well, I mean, he gets hit. He goes down, takes a nap and wakes up. So maybe it just reminds him of home. <laughs> like, ah, uh, I know this feeling. Oh, okay, we're friends now. But we see Penguinator picked up a cane from Baron Castle. That is, for a gated character check, you always want to get the big high roll of the Soya, but cane is a pretty nice consolation prize. He's going to be able to use some of the nice lances we found. He's got the jump command, which if we have to deal with Valvalis in an awkward spot, will make things potentially easier. And he's just a generally solid melee fighter. And there is our Magma Key. Yep, there is our underground access. Penguinator will turn that in right away, I am quite certain. Meanwhile, Kinda Nerdy Housewife reconfigured her equipment. Uh, she had a ninja hat and a crystal armor in her inventory. Ooh. Now, it... Cecil's still taking quite a bit of damage in the front row here. 
one thing that she can do is to put her Cecil in the back row. There is a glitch in this game where normally when you put on a weapon that could be used from the back row because it's ranged. These are bows and the Dwarven Axe, which is thrown, um, and Edge's boomerangs. They have uh, a flag on them that say, yes, I can deal damage from the back row. There's a glitch in this game where if you equip that item, like a Dwarven Axe, which you always start with on this flag set, and then put on any other weapon, it, the game doesn't remember to update to say that you can't. So you can always attack from the back row. So we call that the back row glitch. What kind of nerdy housewife could do here is put Cecil in that back row, and I don't know the exact numbers, but it's a much better defense for him. On top of that crystal armor, she had a glass hat in her inventory. The ninja hat's really good for agility, but the glass hat has so much armor on it. Um, or put that glass hat on a different character, and uh, it, it would make the punches hurt a lot less. Yes. The specific formula is that accuracy is halved on attacks of the back row and your defense is doubled. That's a very big thing because one of the important factors of the damage calculation rules in Free Enterprise is, well, I just said rolls. It doesn't sound like it, but you're actually attacking multiple times when you have, based on how much strength and agility you have. The same goes for monsters, so you have this attack power of, say, 100 attack power weapon times 8. Well, that means you're hitting 8 times. If you have 40 defense, you're subtracting 40 damage from each roll. If you're in the back row, you have 80 defense and you're subtracting 80 damage from each roll. And that is huge. Not to mention, half accuracy can still go and help significantly because most enemies... I don't think there's any enemy in the game that has a long-range counter, so you're just simply going to go and take take your hits in general. Yang getting bonked up the side of the head uh, by on Pegmeta's side, gives up the spoon, uh, sort of like a Frenchish vanilla, like instead of his wife having it, he's just like, here, have the spoon for your troubles. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but um, we'll see what Sheila has when you return the pan in a moment, uh, Penguinator diving down for this freebie in the Fey March. There's a free key item down here. It's normally the rat tail. And uh, otherwise, I wanted to say, Baka, you have all the detailed knowledge drops here. I'm kind of nerding out at the moment. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, spent a fair amount of time learning, you know, exactly how to go and make systems work for me in this game because there's a lot of competitive members in this community. There's a lot of very good runners and any bit of knowledge you get well there's another french vanilla drop adamant in the fame arch chest yep that is normally the reward for turning in the rat tail uh but kind of among in the theme uh from the very start of this in the theme of kind of skipping ahead a little bit we got the baron key right away now we got the spoon a little early now we got the adamant rock a little bit early that's just really set the tone for this seed yeah and speaking of setting the tone, KNH has found two bosses that are okay to avoid. One being Mom Bomb in the Mist Cave. A little annoying in the fact that it gains 9,000 extra HP no matter where it is, so we're just getting out of that fight. And coming to Waterfall to find Dark Knight Cecil, who is a technically free fight, provided those dark waves don't kill you. And this bot didn't do enough damage. DKC was feeling uh, um, like he needed cleansing. That's why we're at this waterfall. I thought after seeing Feld and Cecil, was feeling really washed up. <laughs> yes. But KNH going and taking a bit of experience, just getting some levels on that Cecil. Cecil, after turning into a Paladin, does start at level one, so getting some extra HP can go and really help. And it looks like KNH is going to Toria either to shop or maybe take a stab at that Twin Heart. Yep, I wouldn't be surprised to see both in the exact order that you just said. And uh, yeah, calling out a comment in chat, killing it with the jokes. Abaka's definitely killing it. I'm here to just absorb and laugh. <laughs> oh, no, you're definitely going in, giving plenty for our viewers to enjoy as our, our Estorian, our Restreamer, and Scythe Marshal, our Scythe, eh, excuse me, Scythe Marshal, our Tracker. We wouldn't go and have a show without all of you, so thank you all very much for helping us put on the show. Yeah, absolutely. We always appreciate our Restream team. Otherwise, it would just be Baka and I here talking about the game, and uh, I'd just be asking lots of questions about details, which might be interesting, but you're here for the runners. 
And speaking of runners, <laughs> in a odd twist, the Penguiner has gone and gotten the Rat Shell from Sheila, who has decided that, no, I don't want to trade away Cutler. I want to go and trade away exotic specialties for certain little fusions. Yeah, but also the I, key. I don't want to know what Sheila's cooking. <laughs> But Sheila's also just playing, um, like, uh, uh, it, it's like musical chairs for, uh, key items right now. Yeah, we've got two key item cha two items that are usually from the underground in the form of the Luka key that you get on your second visit to Dwarf Castle in the vanilla game, and the Rat Tail. But both runners choosing, just out of serendipity, to go to the Luka, the, uh, Twin Harp at this point. Is this the rare dueling harps? I, I always hate to you and have dueling harps just because it means we only get one instance of music, probably. Yeah, I know. So if you're listening to this and you want to hear the music, now is the time to come in, pay attention, or change your volume. Uh, we'll get music in here in just about a minute, and we won't be able to uh, repeat it. Because uh, our runners are both taking this check now. Who is the boss you don't want to see here, Baka? Huh, that's a very good question. Belvalis is awkward, but Valvalis is awkward at any spot where I have to rely on mages. I think Rosa has Berserk at this point, so Cecil should be okay. Ult Gauntlet's annoying, just because they might not gain the magic resistance, but Titan's a bit slow and it's going to take a while to fight. Golbez! Golbez is the one I don't want to fight here, because you are automatically healed up to full when you start this fight, which sounds great. Unfortunately, Golbez kills your party off down to two characters, which means you can't prep yourself for that. Furthermore, you can do some status shenanigans where you go and apply certain statuses to your party and prevent them from... prevent other statuses from going and affecting you, like Paralyze. You can't yeah, do that when... Yep. Oh, I was going to say, chat points out the magic is weak here, but... Um... Actually, no, the magic power is really good here, isn't it? Um, but you know what? We'll get to that in just a moment. Meanwhile, we're going to let DJ Spoonie B play his tune for us today. Oh my, as we play this very lovely Star Wolf theme, we go and get a double required uh, Twin Harp with the Elements Might. Are you a fan of barrel rolls? I I'm not a fan of being told to do them. Over and over and over, are you sure? You know, I, I might just try and wing it sometimes, but I'm not that good. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just gotta... <laughs> You just gotta let it fly. And speaking of let it fly, Cecil let the damage fly as uh, the elements are now down. Yep, easy peasy. I did see we got to the Kainato, uh part of the fight. This is an interesting boss where it's normally on the giant and uh, has kind of a health thing. But before I get into that, just finding a Dragoon hat, a good piece of gear for Cecil, though I think We've got a lot of that, or also Kane can wear that as well. But importantly, uh, two, like we said, two objectives taken care of in one spot with uh, defeating the elements, our fifth objective, and completing Cave Magnus. Yeah, so Penguinator is now just one objective away from go mode. Well, not even go mode. Penguinator still needs to wait his rooms, but one objective away from having their crystal. And uh, not even 40 minutes, just barely 40 minutes in, excuse me. So we've got plenty of time yeah this is a flag set where it's so interesting the races i've played and watched um it really encourages or sometimes demands a high completion rate just because of how many key items you typically need to get through a seed and if a boss or a character is hiding um at a spot uh that you really don't that's difficult to find um it can just encourage a longer seed but sometimes 
you just suddenly get like your hunts out of the way like we have here with Penguinator and we already found Cave Magnus. So yeah, I mean, it's very possible that we find like Darkness Rock and Legend Sword in like the next two checks. And then it's suddenly like, oh crap, I can go to Z now. Uh oh, <laughs> like that very well could happen. Yes, we are. If we find the pass, we're in a slightly awkward, awkward position because I don't believe we've seen Sirens Underground yet. But we do have a Luka key available to us from that pan, and we could do a door grind up to some level of experience. Penguinator is choosing to go into this dwarf castle for the character and the uh, double boss and uh, key item check. Yeah, uh, dwarf castle makes a lot of sense to me. It's We're kind of at a point, actually, where dwarf castle isn't the most incentivizing to me because we have the character that we want, we have the boss that we want. We could find Demist here, but otherwise it's just kind of a long check, but we're also getting a bit low on checks here. It's sort of like this or Keyless Tower or the Fame Arch um, are kind of the only things left, I believe. So it makes sense to come here. It's just sort of the easier thing to deal with uh, yeah, we compared also have to Top of Tower or Fame Arch. We also have Sealed Cave, but what I'm thinking of is a oh, character okay. check is always great on these flags because uh, Fasoya is not taking a vacation like he was in Zima Zone 3, and this is a gated character check. Fasoya can only show up in those gated character checks. But when he shows up, he is a big, big boon. He comes with a good number of spells, depending on the number of bosses you've defeated. And more to the point, he can have Nuke well before your characters can. He can have Quake in this party that really is not getting it into the high 40s. That is a huge benefit. You're very right about that. That is very, very important. It's sort of like whoever finds that foo first has a huge advantage. At this point, I believe with the number of bosses we've already killed, foo will almost certainly have nuke, if not near his full spell list. Uh, even at this point, I believe. Yeah, Penguin is defeated, I think, around 10 or so bosses. So that would put Vesoya at 15 or maybe even 1800 HP or 1600 HP, which would give him the majority of spells. Only two more bosses would be required to get the full spell list and guarantee nuke. Yeah, so he'd be pretty likely to have nuke. And even if he doesn't, I mean, you can, if you want, like kill the mist dragon spot or, you know, get through those really quickly and just get nuke uh, if you feel that you need it. But yeah, that's a very good point, Baka. The character advantage is really important. That is something that's done a lot, and that is distinctly not Fisoya. That is Edward, and it is getting taken over Rydia. Because we do have a spoon, and that flag is on, isn't it? We do have a spoon. Getting rid of Rydia, I wonder if that's going to become our anchor, or if Porm's going to take that, or keep on that role. I guess it would be Porm. And we find Water Hag here, so that's that's kind of good news. We'd like to see it a little bit later, but it's not the Alt Gauntlet, uh, which would make you feel really bad at this spot because so far we haven't come up with anything good uh, though we'll of course see what dwarf castle has for a key item um the fight will go quickly though at least yes only three hits to go and take out this uh, water hag and then he decides all right i'm done in the middle game it's just him and edward and in free enterprise we decide we're not going to play that fairly sometimes you just need a pep talk you're feeling down, you're feeling like, oh, the seed is, you know. And Anna says, don't give up. Don't give up, Baco. And the water hag says, Arrgh! Yeah. As, uh, he As may or do. may not have his pirate, his pirate dream stolen from him. Canon at Nerdy Housewife is through the Twin Harp, but does not have that bearing key, which we know is in Baron Castle. Looks like Canon Nerdy Housewife is doing some shopping while Pingmater is continuing to blaze forward, having some different arrangements in their party allowed Penguin to go and get through those fights. He did have a light sword sooner than K H did, which gave him extra damage against uh, Bygan, and did have the back row glitch set up on his, on his Cecil while K H or Kenanuri Half-Swipe does not. And Penguinator being rewarded big with the tower key here, that um, that's huge because now if we had done if Penguinator had done top of tower first and then came to Dwarf Castle, he would have had to go back. Now we can for sure go to uh, tower without it being a gamble per se and just take out the two bosses there 
with the, uh, the top of lower tower, that's normally Luge's spot, and then the cannon room where the dark imps normally are, which is usually a very easy encounter. Uh, so I very much imagine that's where uh, Penguinator will go next. Yeah, that seems like a very reasonable place to go. And Penguinator also having fought with the inventory boss enough, deciding to go and uh, take a bit more drastic action, going to selling off a number of items in their inventory. It's very difficult to go and down these loot flags and not just loot a lot because there's always good things in chest but every time you have to go and see that inventory management screen you lose just a bit of time yep our true final boss one of two trial one of two true final bosses in this game one is the inventory boss the other are npcs and towns <laughs> that uh like to block your way look you're free to enter Tori as much as you like the lady at the front there however is more than willing to go and keep you there as long as she likes <laughs> she just says you will never leave you will never escape stay a while and listen uh, to answer a question from chat the magma key was from the Baron trash can so you need to go and get through Ashura and Yang I don't know if Ken uh, Kennedy Housewife has gone in to try and take the Ashura fight but she has been she has bounced off the Bygan fight and is currently shopping for supplies after completing Twin Heart And we do see that Penguiner is going up that tower that Solaris has mentioned, so not a bad play. Two key item checks. One key item can go and put you in go mode, and a second can go and get you to the moon or to Zeromus. That would be quite a thing. Like you said, if we find the pass, we don't I don't believe we have access to sirens. Penguinator do did check. Uh, the two other shops that I, I don't think we had seen, Dwarf Castle had coffins, I believe, and Tomra had hourglasses, which are very great J items to have. One instant kills most enemies and some bosses that don't have the boss bit. And the hourglass uh, is an AoE stop that lasts, lasts essentially forever. It's not forever, but it's basically forever. Um, but they're not sirens, which we would normally use to get experience. We do have the Luka key at least. And I think we would get to 10 items finding the crystal, so that probably would end up being the grind. But yeah, we, we could be getting very close here. Or it could be chains upon chains, or we get access to the to the moon and you know everything's locked behind the earth crystal, which is like <laughs> the last thing Penguinator finds. It could go either way, really. Yes. And another option we have, we do have Edward in our party, who, <laughs> if you are willing to go and spend a bit of time anyway in fights, go and beat Saromas with Edward and a cursed anchor because of well as long as you have enough money to purchase the star bells and other items you need because of Eddie strats big bang can hit your whole party but I can't hit a bard hiding off the screen Edward Eddie is the most powerful character in free enterprise who else can hide in the vacuum of space indeed and that hide is so important because it means you can go and get Saromas to kill himself with a counter script because he will go encounter most any spell with Nuke. So you go and throw a spell at him, have his wall up, he'll cast Nuke, he'll bounce off your wall, you'll go and hit him, you'll hide Edward from the Big Bang, he'll come out and miss, bring back out Edward, and you do that for about 15 minutes. While Edward is saying the entire time, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, <laughs> stop hitting yourself. Is he saying it or singing it? Because I'm pretty sure Edward would definitely go for the oh, singing it. He's absolutely singing it. And it's just like, it's kind of a different song every time he does it. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. And for all those 15 minutes, you can go make up your own verses, chat. I'm not going to stop you. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. I'm also done. <laughs> And we see that Ken and Ernie Housewife is done going anywhere but Baron Castle as she's now going to take on this Ashura fight and does seem to be making some little progress, has that wall set up that uh, Penguiner did while Penguiner is polishing out the Leviathan at the top of tower, getting a good chunk of experience from this spot and just continuing to pull up further and head further and further ahead in the seed. Ken and Ernie Housewife just had a bit of a hard stop. Hey, there's that Earth Crystal you're saying that Penguiner is going to last location. So is KNH assured to get through this fight? That wall can wear off, so I'm not going to go and uh, call it a certain victory, but kind of hard for her to lose at this point, seeing as Ashura uh, seems to be down for the count. Yep, down she is. And that Earth Crystal, two character checks, 
It could be two Fusoyas. I have seen this. It is. We do have distinct ten. Oh, ha <laughs> I'm sorry. One <laughs> second. We need to go and yeah, uh, go describe this in full glory. This is Golbez. This is one of the weakest spots in the game. Golbez is still going to kill off two of your characters before you even have the chance to hurt him. And we do see that uh, Penguin is doing something rather clever, not doing statuses, but putting uh, Edward in the top slot, and Edward's going to hide. You know how again. I said that? Go ahead. Oh, it's just, I was going to say, again, most powerful character in the game. Yes, because he can hide from Big Bangs. He can also hide from your party, from Golbez, and not count towards the two-character limit of characters who will survive this shadow. And Penguinator did something that I really like. Uh, when you step into the tower room, if you just press A and you don't move, you clear the text box at the top of the screen and you get to see who exactly you're about to run into. Because, yeah, there are just a couple of bosses. Really, at this point, I think it's just Golbez who are like, not trivial. Uh, the alt gauntlet would be another one, though you would get through it fine um, at that spot, but uh, yeah. Yes, it would take a bit. But we're going to go and see the might of that spoon as Edward getting a bit of an advantage. Because he's not paralyzed, he doesn't need to get healed by Golbez before he can take an action. Golbez is immune until Shadow goes away. Then he decides, okay, I'm going to play fair now after I've killed off most of your team. And Edward says, forget that. Golbez is like, Golbez is like, why am I in this cannon room? What am I doing here? Why does this hurt so much? The pain. Uh. But really smart of Penguinator to get that swing immediately with Edward because this spot has like 600 hit points, something like that. It's very little, yes. It's very easy to just one shot this spot. So no Star Veil needed. Definitely helpful, and we do see Kind of Energy Housewife is through Baron Castle, is going to be getting their Magma Key, and unfortunately, it's definitely bled a lot of time to Penguinator, but there's it's only one key item. You have the pan, Penguinator hasn't gone to that Luca cave yet, so maybe Penguinator gets distracted by Earth and decides to go there. KH dives Luca and gets rewarded for it. We will have to see. Yeah, Earth could really show up with nothing. We already have. I think a, a pretty strong party at this point. Afu, of course, is a welcome addition because just that entire spell kit is such a, a huge boost in power. But between the Spoon and the Excalibur, we really have all the power. Penguinator has all the power he needs to really just power through the seed. Um, so if Penguinator does check the Earth Crystal, let's see what this item is. Ooh. Finds a hook. That's pretty huge. That's the last chain on Earth. He's going to check. Yep, checking this immediately. Uh, the shop might have sirens. I suspect that's the thing that he cares about. Oh, well, the shop has sirens. That's a check. And then also, Penguinator has that rat tail, which he can finally turn in, because uh, you need the hovercraft to get to the island that the um, NPC is at to turn that key item in. So finding the hook there was pretty huge. Uh, if the rat tail turns up to have nothing, now going back to what I was saying, and Penguinator goes to the Earth Crystal, it's kind of a long check. There's two bosses, you get two characters, but if they're not very good, um, Kind of Dirty Housewife could make up a lot of time, uh, like uh, Baka said, by using the Luka key. Does Kind of Dirty Housewife have the Luka key? She will get it when she turns in the pan to Sheila. The because pan, got it. Yes, the Sylphs gave uh, the spoon. Sheila gave the uh, Sheila gave, I believe, the rat tail, and then she also gave the Luca key for turning in the pan. So, looks to be. An ad... Go ahead. Answering a question from chat, uh, Demist has not been located yet. And as you predicted, Penguinator is going to Eblin, checking the shops, going to see if there are sirens in this seed or if they're on the moon. First Penguinator is selling because Penguinator has a very filled inventory. Yep, inventory boss rearing its uh, ugly head again. So even if Demas did, who does not have sirens but does have Bacchus wines, which are very helpful. I do like a good wine. I mean, it's great for cheese strats as well, as we saw with Plague. Let's me, uh, 
Nah, nah, you know what? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. finding sirens is kind of annoying. That was the one shop that guaranteed two tier five items, which are elixirs, hourglasses, coffins, sirens, uh, and Bacchus wines. The moon is the last shop that could have sirens in it, but it's not guaranteed to have them, so we might not find them at all. Yep, and there's a pass for Pang Leader. There's a Axis's Aromas. Now we just need a Pink Tail or a Legend Sword. And where does Pang Leader choose to go? Does Pang Leader choose to go to Dot with the Earth Crystal, or does Pang Leader choose to go to Luka Cave with this, uh, uh, the Seal Cave with the Luka Key? I, I think it kind of either is a pretty defensible Luca key. Luca is nice because you go down and see the item first, and then you can see the boss to see if it's Demas, and then you can just reset out of it. Um, but Zod is kind of right here. We're already he's already above ground. But yeah, we see Penguinator going back to the underground. I think he's headed straight for that Luca cave. That makes a lot of sense to me. As you mentioned, you can see that key item first. Both of I mean, I'll walk through both of these, and uh, we don't have warp, so this Luka key could be really annoying as you have to walk out manually. But better to go and see if you have progression here rather than going and fading it for who, who knows how long. But this, the moon is uh, looking to be rather sparse this seed, though. We still haven't seen Legend or Pink Tail. They could both, one or both could still be up there. Otherwise, we have every single chain from Earth. We have the hook. And we're just missing some character check items outside of those two objectives. And of course, the Darkness Crystal, which will be on Earth. So this is, this is going to go and be a pretty serious thing. That's going to go and be... Where do you go and... I mean, if Darkness could be here, that's going to go and drive a decision. I don't think you go and leave an Earth Crystal here unless you go and have any... Uh, unless you're desperate to go to the moon. We haven't seen a lot of free boss fights. We haven't seen Dark Imps. We haven't seen Baron Guards. We haven't seen Bahamut, to my knowledge. So those are a lot of free fights you can go and pull on the moon. Alternatively, we still haven't seen Antlion. We haven't seen Demis. Those are bosses you really don't want to fight on the moon. And we have another instance of vanilla as Darkness Crystals in its vanilla location. No, I imagine the vanilla game, people who knew the Warp Glitch would just be, oh, well, that's easy. We'll just have that after doing Dwarf. We don't turn that on in this tournament because we let people actually walk down here. And we have the Lunars. That an interesting boss. This is a very high magic power spot. Penguin are thinking very hard about that Berserk and instead choosing to go... Actually, might not be thinking about Berserk, might be thinking of Star Vales, as there is a specific strategy with these D-Lunars. Uh, they will go and use Breath after a certain number of turns, and you can reflect Breath and turn those D-Lunars into frogs. However, you need to be able to cast Wall, and... Yeah, that Wall is... Uh, that was Star Vales. That's something that you didn't go and, unfortunately, get. So, Penguin Leader just burning some Bacchus Wines and some Berserks and is just going to go and let the Zerkers go to town, doing thousands of damage each hit. That is definitely something you're not sad to see. But these Reflected Viruses are probably going to hurt. Yeah, 2,580. That's a lot of damage. That's going to hurt a lot. You, okay. Penguin Leader is getting bailed out. Definitely going and two characters who are not Berserk are doing a lot of damage are out of the picture. And if we can knock out one of these, ooh, one of these D-Lunas is going to go down, but they do have another shot. Another volley going on in the D-Lunas. The front one is down. That is going to go and keep them safe for a bit. One last reflected virus, and then I believe these healers are going to go back to punching or just go down to the 3,000 damage from Excal Cecil. Oh, the aggression. I love it. Uh, the, those viruses could have really gone the wrong way there, but... Uh, just knowing that he could power through if at least one of them lived, which is about how it played out, and uh, really rewarded for that strategy there. Yeah, and Penguinator, it's annoying to not go and have a warp caster here. Might feel a little annoyed about not going to the Earth Crystal to check for 
a warp caster or having given up pretty at this point. But otherwise, I kind of feel pretty good about having that darkness so early. But that stings a little bit, but uh, I think he'll feel okay about it because that's the gamble that you make, right? It's either he goes to the Luca Cave or goes to Earth Crystal. Those are the two options because the Fey March probably not the option really wanted here. Um, so yeah, uh, very well rewarded for the choice. Yep. I don't know if Penguin is going to go and try and take on that Mylon fight, which I didn't see which type of Mylon it is, if it's Mylon Z or Mylon, uh, Mylon and Friends in the Fame March. That one might not be too bad, but it also just might not be very fast either. I didn't catch it. Um, who is the other boss? Do you remember? I remember thinking I don't want to fight that, but that's a lot of bosses, so... Ah, Antlion. Yes, Antlion and the Leviathan spot. I'm not fighting that because the uh, Leviathan spot is an odd quirk. Uh, Vanilla Leviathan never casts the magic, never does a physical attack in the vanilla game because he just casts spells. So someone apparently had some fun and gave Leviathan an incredibly high attack power. And the Antlion just punches as the normal script. They only counter physical attacks as a extra thing. But otherwise, every turn, it's punch, punch, punch. And they do a lot of damage with each of those punches. It's not just very high attack power. It's like the second highest attack power in the game, I believe. It, it, it's definitely something like that. It is, um, you, you don't want to fight that fairly. You can go and use two white, two white mages to spam blink and keep yourselves up. You can find a moon veil with a Cecil and have them cover and automatically protect them as long as you're not doing any specific full counters because people would still die from that. But uh, yeah, we're, we're up for something and Penguin Raider is choosing to launch the whale and go go to the moon. I don't know if Penguin is just checking the shops to see if sirens are around, if that will determine strategy, or if Penguin Raider is deciding I want to hit as many key items off as possible as I only need one, and I don't want to go in and spend that much time on Earth. Yeah, the reason I asked about the other Fae March fight is because I'm thinking that if I don't know whether that's Mylan or Mylan and friends, Mylan Zed would be very easy to deal with because all he does is punch and we have uh, Excalibur that will deal uh, extra damage uh, to him and a spoon, uh, which also deals quite a bit of damage. Uh, but um, if you can't take on the other fight very easily or if it's just too slow to deal with, I definitely can see the play of just skipping both of them entirely and coming to the moon. And I saw Penguinator uh, pick up I believe we find sirens here, huh? Yeah, we did. We are finally out of the drought of sirens, and we are going to see another gated character check. Twelve sirens bought by Penguinator. That uh, that Moon says bud? maybe he's probably planning on doing some uh, dragon eggs. Ooh. Tala is interesting. I think I would take Tala and replace Porum because Tala comes with. A wide variety of utility black and white magic spells, including especially the spell weak, which makes fighting gold dragons pretty appealing. I agree entirely. Tella is a great pickup. He's Tella is a character who's fantastic because he can have low stats and still contribute heavily, especially from that middle slot, because that middle slot gives not just determining the anchor, but also gives an accuracy bonus. Penguiner is choosing to go back to the blue planet, might be choosing to do the grinding on gold dragon eggs, might want to go and do the Tower of Zot because doesn't want to risk leaving something behind on Earth. But uh, that's... Penguiner's got a lot of nice things in their, at their disposal. Yeah, he's got good options here. I think both plays are, they make sense to me. You either commit to one or the other. You could commit to the moon right away there, sort of as soon as you found that darkness rock. But coming down here instead, there are things to deal with. And with both the spoon word and uh, our Excalibur Cecil, yeah, I see Penguinator, he's putting Cecil at the top slot. Uh, Tala will get cursed, so his levels won't matter. You don't have to knock him down. He'll always have one agility. And uh, Penguinate is just going to hold A here. Yep. Pop some eggs. He has 10 key items, I believe. So he can kill really as many of these as he wants. And oh, that damage was like just shy of killing the yellow dragon here. Yeah, it's about Maze. 400 damage shy. I think it's 1820 here. But the lit missing Cecil and Rosa 
Eddie going and mocking up the dragon, and then we're going to see a big boost in experience. Six levels on Tella, four on other character, uh, other members of the party, excuse me, four and five. Yeah, that's uh, that's some good experience. We're going to probably see Pennywear go up to probably his aromas ready levels, and then just start running through every check in the game. Yeah, finding those sirens was so great because now you've got 10 key items. You know that you can just do your grind immediately, get that huge boost in power. Rosa will gain Cure 4. Um, she already has Blink, so a lot of... Uh, you can just take that team and really run over the encounters now. With the levels, the Fame Arch becomes a lot more tempting for me down here. If Penguinator wants to take it, some people choose to fade. Um, because it would go faster to do both those encounters with these levels uh just just from the damage that uh cecil and edward funny enough can be dealing here yep and answer question from jet yes we have a cursed ring it is on tele penguin has found that from the back of watery pass i don't know if k and h has picked that up would you sell would you say tella is cursed as a character in final fantasy 4. i mean i'm praying to find him all the time because he's I'm not lying, he's a great character. He's really good. He can go and have low agility and do stuff. And if you give him a Somadrock, he can cast Swag Rocks without dying in the process. Yeah, I mean, I'll even go and consider it without maybe a two cure twos and a uh, Berserk is a really nice thing to have for some fights. Or excuse me, two cure fours and a Berserk is nice to have for some fights with Tell's MP pool. Yep, definitely. One weakness of Tala, well, two really. Uh, one is his stat growth and HP growth, and the other is that he's always locked at 90 MP. So giving him a little bit more is always useful. And Penguin is showing why I always check the Baron throne whenever I go to Baron, because I have entirely forgot that this is a thing. We have this check sitting here the whole game that neither runner has gone and peaked. This could be a free fight. Yeah, and if I'm Penguinator, this looms on my mind against really any racer because the Baron key was such an early key item that this check has been on the table the entire game essentially uh, just as soon as you would go through Baron Castle which is pretty early on in this run and we find a Kinatsu here this is not exactly free but after our after the grind that Penguinator did this isn't going to cause too much trouble yeah this is there are far worse places to find Kinatsu this is not a super high HP spot and with the levels we have bunch hurts Definitely hurts a fair bit, but we're going to be able to do some decent damage to this Kinazo, and the wave is probably going to knock out Edward, maybe, but Rosa and Cecil and Kane will probably be surviving it just fine. Yeah, the way this boss works, he raises up the water, and then he will cast a wave attack, which does, I believe, I suspect you know the exact number, something like 10% of his current health pool and damage to the entire party. 4% adjusted up to... Somewhere between four to six, because all damage in Final Fantasy IV is it has a base number that can go that can be increased up to fifty percent. So base Got damage okay. is four percent, and then multiplied by some multiplier up to an extra fifty percent damage. Yeah, and when Kanato is at a spot that has like thirty thousand, forty thousand health, and you don't have a lot of hit points on your team, that wave, where if he's quite fast and you don't get time to act. Uh, can do a lot of damage. And Penguinator just finding a Sand Ruby here, he's not interested in that. Resets right out of it, saves his time. Don't have to worry about that check anymore. Um, but yeah, to complete the explanation for Kinatsu, he casts his wave after he raises the water, dealing that AoE damage. And your two ways to deal with that are as follows. One, the preferred way, damage. The more damage you deal to Kinatsu, the less max the less current health that he has, so the wave will do less. Your second option is to cast a lit spell or use an item that casts a lit spell, like a Thor Rage, which is guaranteed to be in Overworld Shops, uh, to knock him out of that wave uh, stance uh, and kind of avoid the wave that way. So in some spots, it's very difficult to deal with, but in that one, pretty, uh, pretty easy. Yeah, and that's definitely... Dealing with Kanazo is a very technical fight sometimes. Being able to go and just tank waves is very helpful. Also, Plumeria Knight, correcting me, on the wave, unlike other attacks, is 4% plus up to 255 extra damage instead of 50%, which is unique to wave, or at least not commonly used elsewise, otherwise. 
and we see Penguinator doing the top down play. We like to always talk about top down or bottom up on the lunar subterrain, meaning top down is you take the encounter that's at the very top of the lunar subterrain, and it makes a lot of sense here at the Paledom Altar because he is only one key item away from go mode in two ways, either the Legend Sword or the Pink Tail. Otherwise, you have to spend something like three or four minutes going all, I don't know if it's that long, but going all the way to the bottom. There's a big density of bosses and key items down there, but if we find the item, if he finds the item he needs here, he can just leave. It didn't take him very long and be in go mode right now. Yes, and we do see Rubicant is in this first spot. It doesn't have exceptionally high uh, magic power here, but it's still going to go and ship down this team pretty well. Would you say they have a leg up on the uh, competition here in this fight? I'd say it's getting pretty hot in here. But Lurba can't, can't take off all his clothes. All right, he's got that uh, Cloak of Flame, so that keeps him protection from the cold. Doesn't want to lose his cool or anything. It's also good when you're on fire, which he is not currently, because he is about to uh, be knocked down here. The magic attack stat is not very strong here, so the team really not caring about these fire two uh, counter scripts. And yeah, Edward and Tala, who don't have very great health, will get knocked down, but easy peasy, fight is over. We'll see what our resident leg coughs up today. Just a power shirt, nice equipment, plus 15 strength. Not progression, but Penguin is saying, yeah, I'll keep it. It's uh, going to go and help make other things faster and probably looking at the difference between the walks of down to the bottom of the moon from here and outside is marginal enough that, yeah, just keeping it's fine. Meanwhile, we do Peng see Canonary Housewife is at uh, Leviathan. Yep, Canonary Housewife has been able to really gather her gear and her party uh, together. Leviathan at this spot uh, really only casts spells and they're not very dangerous. Uh, so we'll be able to get through this fight and get her uh, get her reward from it. Yep, that was, I believe, it was a key item I remember, but I can't remember exactly which one. But uh, k and is I'm racking my brain, I can't think of it either. Oh wait, this is the Earth Crystal. That's what it was. I believe we get a hook from the tower. Yeah. So that will put KNH pretty close to where Penguinator is on key items, but Penguinator is up that Luka Cave check, the bottom of uh, the Baron Basement check, and a bit of grinding as well. Kind of nerdy housewife might feel that uh, the Earth Crystal is sort of the safer play to take right now and might get rewarded pretty big if it has um, either of our two go mode key items. Yep, that is definitely an option we can go and we can definitely hit big off of this and it's just one key item. It could be anywhere. Penguiner did specifically face this and the two checks in Paymarch before coming down to this moon. Yeah, it's sort of tricky because there are two ways to go mode, but if the Earth Crystal gates the Legend Sword, let's say, and one of the Fame Arch fights gates the Pink Tail, Penguinator will have to do the entire moon, even if some of the bosses like our Officer Soldier fight, this is free, with the coffin, the soldiers don't know what to do. They get so confused they start punching each other, I still don't understand that, but sure, just go with it. Um, but Penguinator would have to clear the entire moon and get essentially nothing for it, if that scenario turns out to be true, where um, all of the key items for Go Mode are on Earth. Or Penguinator finds Go Mode right here and there's nothing on Earth and uh, it's Penguinator's game, or they both find their ways to Go Mode in their divergent routes and uh, Penguinator's definitely got the levels, but they could find Z access at about the same time. Yeah, there's a. Uh... There's a lot of options open, and we do see Penguinator finish off this fight, getting a good, healthy 290,000 experience. That's just really giving Penguinator a nice edge. And let's see what these two key items are. Not progression. That's the, the Girls' Night uh, power package right there. The Artemis Bow and the uh, Bahamut Summon. 
Would you like to do some damage? Because that is a good way to do the damage. And while Bahama is nice, I think even at this point in the seed, it's tapered off for what uh, you want from an enemy. And hey, look, uh, another shade of kind of free, Dark Elf. Not an exceptionally hard boss in the first form. is going to go and do the scripted triple elemental spells for at rather weak magic power. Going to cast weak, going to cast piggy and do that cycle. After you go through about half his HP, he's going to go and turn into a dragon and punch and do some breath attacks. But he also takes a lot of damage from Holy, and uh, turns out Cecil, really good at doing Holy damage. Yes, and also this uh, dark dragon form has something what we call he has lost the boss bit. What does that mean, Baka? Well, bosses in Final Fantasy IV, creatures will go and have specific ailments that they'll be resistant to, and bosses don't really bother with that. They have a, spe a specific bit called the boss bit, which prevents them from being hit with any status ailment, including stop, instant death, low HP, which the or HP critical, which weak does, and a number of other things. Uh, and sometimes they forgot to add it in, like the Calbrena dolls are, don't go and have the Cal dolls in the back of the Calbrena fight don't have it, and this Dark Elf doesn't have it, so in the vanilla speedrun, you see Telecast weak on that Dark Dragon, and one hit, it's dead. Yep, and same with the Officer-Soldier fight, that's why Pekinoider was able to throw that Coffin item onto the Officer and kill it right away. Um, and you called out 290,000 experience, I believe he used a life glitch on that then, correct? Yes, that is another glitch that we have in the vanilla game, where, to explain how the life spell works, when you go and cast life one on a character, it goes and revives them with five times their vitality. Great! That's treachery! Uh, stats are weird, where his vitality goes down as he gets higher level, so you'll kind of be seeing him revive with just one HP at high levels. Meanwhile, monsters don't have a vitality stat, or their vitality stat is zero, so when you throw a life potion on them, it tries to revive them. It revives them for enough time for the game to say, Hi, how much HP do you have? Oh, you have zero HP? You are now dead. And give you credit for an extra kill. Yeah, and, and thank you for that explanation. And meanwhile, Kinda Nerdy Housewife, raid, raiding that treasury, raiding, raiding, sure, both, um, finding literal power with the power shirt and zeus gauntlet and uh, glass hats for days i see three of them in her inventory now and a tiara uh pretty powerful pickups i don't blame at all penguinator for not picking those up because oh and i'm just gonna stop talking right now because penguinator has found go mode with the legend sword at the Ogospo ogopogo altar that had pale dim on it Penguinator is in go mode. All he needs to do is leave, turn in the forge, the legend sword with the adamant, get the Excalibur from it, which funny enough, he already has, and uh, go fight Z with that pass. Yeah, Penguinator, Penguinator has a lot of levels. He came up pretty well leveled before doing that fight, which he life glitched for another almost 300,000 experience. Penguinator's got very sturdy, a very sturdy party. Hella has a Chris ring, is going to be a relative visual Obi-Wan anchor. This is just going to be Penguinator walking into the Jerome's fight and beating the tar out of the poor guy. And by poor guy, I mean the Eldritch Horror from Beyond the Veil, but you know. An Eldritch Horror from Beyond the Veil who is going to get destroyed by a spoon. I mean... Just let that sink in. Maybe it makes more sense to them in context. Yeah, maybe to an Eldritch Horror, a spoon is just the ultimate tool of of destruction. It could be the bane of their the pure bane of their existence as it uh it is it, it's something. And we're just definitely gonna go and have fun with that, and we're gonna go and see Pingreader potentially have fun with the second X scale that he's probably gonna sell if he does anything with it. We also have access to this coal shop, which when you go and open the coal shop, you do go and get access to a better shop than you have on S standard. But Penguin might feel, all right, I, I have a power shirt, I have a Cecil, I have an Excalibur, I don't need anything else. I'm just going to go and finish the seed. I've done 23 out of the 28 checks in this. So let's just go. And yes, just running out of here, hour 20 in, does not want to go and lose any time whatsoever. 
But Penguin are doing what I, something I've been seeing a lot lately, lately that um, greatly amuses me, uh, always stealing from the old man who forges for you from his bookshelf, getting 40 gold pieces for his trouble. Um, I like the cheeky, uh, the cheeky loot there. It could be a silkweb, which I imagine Penguin would like for a uh, nerf on the first big bang. Yeah, a silkweb would be nice. I don't expect him to check these shops. It's just ready to go. And, uh, you know, Baka, I'm seeing a... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, I'm seeing a distinct lack of a certain flag that likes to show up at this point. Indeed, our uh, lovely fans of Free Enterprise are familiar with the Z flag, which is slightly outdated because we haven't used it for a long time, but... The Z flag, when this randomizer was first created, changed something about Zeromus because it certainly wasn't his location, his stats, or his script because we don't want to change those. He's the final boss for a reason. He's tough, he's scary, he's consistent. Still could be improved in some way. So instead of going and changing anything about him from a gameplay perspective, we like to go and change his looks. So, Solaris, would you do the honors? But who's kicked today now, when, how? <laughs> Did I do it? Something like that. Okay, no, but really, whose butt are we going to kick today? K and H also getting the bad news that there are three canes in this seed. Really feeling the betrayal there. It's, uh... He's definitely laying the team down. Finding but a it, bonus round. That is definitely something KNH is probably going to enjoy seeing. This bot doesn't have that much HP. So isn't too bad to go and finish, but we're gonna see Zeromus' true form on Penguinator's side. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen this. I uh the ultimate controller, the actual literal controller that we use to play this game. I have one just like this. I don't have my Super Nintendo controller anymore, but I have a, um, I'm just going to give a product shot here, apparently, an 8-bit Do SN30 Pro. Looks quite a bit like this controller. I love it quite a bit. And I, I greatly enjoy fighting it as a boss. <laughs> I fought with the controls enough, and, uh, ooh, unfortunately, Edward is going down, which is very unfortunate because Edward used one of the precious few Bacchus wines uh, Painmaker had, and... You really want him to stay up for as long as possible using that. Stay berserk is Edward was doing significant damage. Cecil's doing 4,500 points of damage. I think Edward was doing 3,000. Yeah, Edward really showing his one weakness. It's just a terrible hit point growth. Barely having any more health than Tala. Of course, he's a character that was never intended to be here at Endgame. Neither was Tala. Neither were the twins, though. Their, their growth is for whatever reason, a little bit better than this. But um, yeah, getting knocked down right away. I was concerned that he might not get healed before that big bang, but it looks like he was able to um, kind of get that health back up in time so he can get berserked again. And uh, our berserkers will really just carry this home. Yeah, that's... Uh, you just throwing out some damage is going to go and do more than enough. Going in, having a berserk queued up, not going in, throwing out a heal, but instead going in, switching over. And kind of nerdy housewife finding the pink tail at the end of Zot. Go mode was Ooh. all there that whole time. That is huge. Now, unfortunately, there's really no way for kind of nerdy housewife to catch up, in my opinion. Um, Penguinator would have to take a wipe. And at the health levels that his party is at, it's extremely unlikely. It would have to be a big bang into Medio, something we call the combo platter. Um, but I, I just... I kind of don't see it happening, but I think coming back, um, if she watches back over this, or and of course, they're probably talking about it in the race room. I mean, they're really, because of finding that, they're really quite close together when before the, the difference in kind of just density of checks was quite far between them. So that, that's quite huge to find. Yeah, we see rocks on Penguin's side. K and H, any scratch you would do would not be anywhere near as fast as what Penguin can pull off right now. And I believe we're about to go and see the... Yep, there is the crack. There's the crumble. Penguinator has come in first place. And there's a difference between the stream timer and the official time, specifically because of those delays that we have mentioned. So we are going to go into the 
pulling that up. As we mentioned before, Penguin Air has been having some uh, internet difficulties, which, as you were here at the start of the fate, the start of the race, his feed started later than kind of nerdy housewives. So that's why his time is official: one hour, twenty-four minutes, and ten seconds. It looks like one twenty-five, but we did go and have that extra minute of delay on Penguinator's side due to internet issues. But GG's to Penguinator. Yeah, GG's, and we'll see if we can get him in for an interview shortly. Uh, GG's Penguinator, congratulations on your victory. Thank you. How did you feel about that seed after you completed the overworld and had almost, what, seven key items? The overworld fell kind of slow. Uh, the initial characters were not very strong, so I ended up doing a lot more looting than usual and didn't really find what I was looking for initially. Um, so I wasn't too happy with the, the first 10-15 uh, minutes. And then, kind of, as you said, a lot of key items that kind of opened up pretty quickly from that point. Um, so it's always a little scary. Um, you have a lot of options, and you don't know if you're wasting time on what will turn out to be dead checks or not. Um, so a lot of uncertainty throughout that seat, I'd say. Um, but overall, once I got to the moon, got go mode, just past, or like 110, 115 uh, on the timers, I'd say pretty good overall, so felt good by the end. That's good. That's uh I am I'm also curious as you're as you mentioned, you had a lot of key items and a lot of things open, but that twin heart going and giving you two key objectives and then putting you at three or four objectives. Any specific thoughts on that? Um so I put the twin harp off a little bit. Uh, cause I typically want to have Berserk before going into Magnus Cave. And so doing Baron Castle to get Berserk first, just to get the experience on Rosa. So it was nice that the Magnus Key was in Baron Castle, so the Baron Castle actually paid out. So I wasn't, you know, behind a Baron Castle at that point. Um, and then once, I guess, yeah, the Twin Harp put me at just needing, I think, one or two key items, the Ottoman and the, the Hook came fairly quickly after that um yeah, I think so at that point that. yeah it was it was just like you know i gotta check places and hope i guess right um i still the one thing is because i had checked all the possible shops on earth then i knew uh, sirens would be on the moon if anything so i kind of figured well it's probably worth getting darkness and going up there just to get the sirens at least um so i was a little more comfortable at that point and, and felt like I could just uh, search for darkness. Definitely made yeah, a the... lot of sense. Oh, go ahead, Solaris. Yeah, I was going to say, the sirens were pretty huge because it really gave your party that infusion of experience you needed to sort of run over the rest of the seed. I was just curious about, um, you had an interesting decision to make. First, it was between Earth Crystal and Luca Cave, and then it was between Earth Crystal and uh, the darkness and going to the moon. Can you just talk about your mindset around that? I know it's very similar to what we were saying, but just about that kind of choice specifically. So initially with Earth and Luca, um, on the one hand, uh, Luca it's relatively quick, about a minute, minute and a half to walk down, and then you can see the item. You don't have to commit to the fight if it's not the item you want. And at that point, it was basically darkness or a go mode item. Um, so I, I knew I wouldn't have to chase a chain. Basically, I, I think Demas technically could have been there, um, but otherwise, it wasn't anything that would gate anything else. Um, so it, it seemed like a, a nice check to make there because I just have to commit. Uh, a minute and a half whereas the earth crystal would be about five minutes uh, give or take and at that point I, I didn't really care for new characters i had excal cecil i think spoonward so i was pretty happy with my current party um and then yeah so the darkness coming from there so as i was saying i, I figured i'd go up for the sirens uh so i partially wanted to stay on earth um, having the pass i I uh, kind of wanted to just avoid going down the moon because that walk does take some time. Uh, but the the bosses I knew about with the summons weren't really bosses I wanted to fight. They were doable, just Antlion and Mylon both pretty slow to get through with a Berserker party. It's definitely very fair. And, um, in a second. Were you concerned about leaving the character checks of Earth behind? Did he have a count with the characters you had seen so far, or were you 
Do you figure that at this point where your party was, Fasoya wasn't going to go and change too much? Yeah, at that point, Fusoya was the only thing that was at all interesting. Uh, I guess an edge mainly for stealing sirens, so I won't have to go buy them. Um, but I was fine with the part I had. I really, once you have an XL seize on these flags, that's typically good enough, especially with a Rosa to back him up with the deserts and any curing you need. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You had that you had that loadout pretty early there, and then finding the spoon kind of right afterwards. Pretty good infusion of power to just kind of punch through everything. Um, and uh, very well run race by you. It was a pleasure to watch. Uh, did you have any other questions, Baka? Uh, just one last one. Uh, with your current record of three wins, one loss, and a tie, how are you feeling about uh, your races next week? Do you feel pressured to try and get as many points as possible for the best brackets placement, or are you going to maybe relax on this and focus more on bra bracket seeds themselves? Uh, so I'm actually n need to check on the rules on the current standings to see to what extent it'll matter about my points um, to know if I would get to potentially skip a, the, the, the initial round or not. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'll be focusing more on the bracket flags. I've started practicing a little bit, but haven't done a whole lot of practice either way so far. Entirely fair. Well, Penguinator, GG's on your victory, and, uh, Looking forward to what you have for a race next week. All right, thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Pacminator. All right, and now we see... Uh, so, Kind of Nerdy Housewife is uh, making an interesting play here. Hasn't found that Darkness Crystal and probably feeling pretty nervous about levels and having the 10 key items. So, I see a door grind going on here. It's pretty smart. It's a good infusion of experience when you don't have access to sirens. Um, you can either star veil up to protect against this search and kind of reflect the disrupt, or you can just sort of throw your characters their damage at the doors and get them uh, uh, killed that way. I believe each door is worth like 60 something thousand experience with uh, 10 key items. Uh, that... So an entire, like doing all of them would get like a Palum to nuke for sure, which might not do all of them, but yeah, it, it's a good option for a grind if you don't have siren, sirens. Yeah, it's definitely, it's not exactly the most favorite grind because it is a little slow compared to those sirens and dragon eggs, but it is reliable experience, which is what K&H needs. As her party's yeah. in the mid, high to mid thirties, so definitely wants to go and be more prepared for Zeromus. Yeah, and I mean, she'll unfortunately get the bad news that the Darkness Rock was here the whole time, but she gets the grind out of the way now. Now you have the levels. You don't have to worry about really the difficulty of the bosses coming up and uh, can really sort of like Penguinator did with the Sirens, power through the rest of the seed. Yeah, and KNH, I mean, all the only part of the seed she has left is that Zerom's fight because she yep. does have the pass. Uh, yeah, right. I, that wasn't in my mind for some reason. I right, I, like temporarily forgot that she had that pink tail. So yeah, the grind makes the complete most sense here. Just get the doors, get the experience, get out, and then go to Z. Yeah, there is. It is an interesting thing of this uh, X and Y set of objectives where you only need four out of the five objectives in order to go and get your go mode for that crystal. And we have another race where. Our runners have two different passes around as Ping Reader, skipping Earth Crystal and going to the moon, but having just had a bit of a more efficient clear, going able to go and clear some of the early uh, fights that kind of kind, kind, uh, excuse me, kind of under house have just had a bit of trouble with. They were Ping had some specific setups that really pushed his advantages a bit more. He found some specific pieces of gear like the light sword well before kind of under housewife did so. He had better damage range with the Bygan fight, which gave him caliber, which gave him even better damage, which made it easier to go through Baron Castle. Just a number of small things that Penguinator was able to go and leverage that just let him take us further and further and more steady lead. And then he got to the he got to the moon, got the darkness, found those sirens, which is a much easier grind to go and siren grind and kill an egg for 1800 HP rather than these doors, which have 6000 HP and are going to be constantly trying to kill you. Yeah, definitely. It on this flag set particularly, I think because it encourages um, more completion, 
than um, some of our free previous competitive flag sets. <laughs> uh, the the penguin showing up here that was <laughs> really caught me off guard. It was funny. Thank you, Penguinator. Um, one small advantage early can snowball into a big lead if it's like you get through a fight faster that, like you said, gets you to a better weapon faster, to a better grind faster, then suddenly the advantage just sort of grows and grows and grows. Um, and that really just speaks to, um, I imagine, probably just uh, experience, um, you know, comfortable comfortability sure that's a word with the <laughs> fights not that kind of nerdy housewife isn't comfortable with the fights but it just this there's so many things to know in this randomizer i said it earlier i'm nerding out with baka this entire stream because of just all the bits of knowledge that you could know about this game and you're really rewarded for knowing those things um so if kind of nerdy housewife watches back i hope um, you know, with a couple of encounters that Penguin did, uh, was able to set up a little bit better, um, you know, she might learn something really good from that. And uh, with finding that pink tail, really at the point that she did, really her route was very competitive with Penguinators. It was just sort of that small advantage that just sort of turned into a bigger and bigger and bigger one until, you know, we got to the point that we are here. Yeah. Taking some early wipes can definitely go and be really big against some of these runners just because they are our runners are very efficient they have gone and most of our top two runners have gone and played some very hard seeds where they have a lot of the ways I've gone and learned this myself is just taking fights that I shouldn't win and grinding out a uh, grinding out a victory one way or another because oh I could go and exploit this small bit like Penguinator specifically set up his party so that Rose was in the top and Cecil was in the second from the top as i mentioned that the middle anchor the middle character is the anchor and except in if it's empty then it goes to the next priority character which is the top slot so rosa was an anchor which meant that he can go and have slightly different atb and then rydia came into the party and she was there and that gave different atb for penguinator and a better setup so that he could go and push damage a bit better and then penguinator also had that back row cecil that back row glitch on cecil so he was just taking less damage able to go and tank hits better and didn't go and get worn down as easily in those early fights where those little bits of HP matter. Yeah, that was really huge for the uh, Plague fight. I think Kind of Notary Housewife took a couple wipes to that, and that Bygan especially, really nasty at that second Baron in spot because of how much physical attack power that spot has for you know the point in the game that you find it. Um, but meanwhile, Kind of Notary Housewife, she's done with her grind, and she's going to go into that Z fight herself. And uh, we'll very likely be seeing a completion time soon here for her as well. And while she does go into this fight, I want to make sure I take another moment to shout out our restream team. We have Escorian uh, doing the restreaming and Scythe Marshall doing our tracking. We would not have a show without them, literally. And uh, also a shout out to my co-commentator, Baka Shinobi. It's been a great time so far. It's definitely been a great time. And thank you as well for joining me, Solaris. This is... Our community is great. If you're going and interested, we go and have a link to our Discord on the Free Enterprise site, which is linked on the Lally Ho League description. So if you're curious about this, feel free to go and check out Free Enterprise itself. Or if you think Free Enterprise is kind of neat, feel free to play it. You can roll your own seeds. No need to race. I'm... I didn't go and do any racing until long after I played a good number of seeds. But um, yeah, it is a great randomizer. Free, please feel free to go and come join us. We are also more than happy to go over lots of things in our Discord. We go and any questions we have about newbies, we're definitely more than willing to answer because there's a lot to learn, as Dolores has mentioned. There's just so much you can know about this so many things and you don't have to learn all of those things you what i love about this randomizer is that it is a low barrier of entry and a high skill ceiling if you set the flag the flags can be set all sorts of ways if you've been watching this tournament season you've only seen one set of flags there are thousands of permutations of how you can arrange these flags to be easier or more difficult for your run. And there's a beginner flag set that is very beginner friendly to run through. You don't have to deal with bosses on the moon. You don't have to deal with the, the summon monster bosses, which is the Fey March and the Bahamut spot. Um, so it 
there are really so many different ways to play this game. And uh, yeah, uh, we would love to have you. I, my, I myself play just casually. You know, I would take four or five hours to get the receipt before when I first started playing this. And then I joined the Discord because um, I really liked, <laughs> I just really liked chat, actually. <laughs> Everybody seemed really <laughs> chill. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'll check out the Discord. And I had questions. I didn't understand, oh my God, so many things. And um, Baka had all the knowledge here. There are like a dozen Bakas, essentially, <laughs> in our Discord <laughs> who are happy to respond to any question you have in our Newbies Corner chat. That chat is very active. A lot of questions get asked. You can search that channel. Also, if you have questions, a lot of knowledge to be gained there. And I'm going to just say one other thing while I'm on a spiel of, you know, uh, enticing people to do things. Um, if you've been watching our races and are like, I can do that. I can be the person behind the mic or I could do the restreaming thing or I could click the buttons. We are always looking for volunteers to join our Restream team. It's very easy. You join our Discord in our Guides and Resources page. There is a link to join with a form. You put it in and uh, put your name in. You don't have to be a runner of the game. You don't have to be that experienced. It does help to know like where key item locations are, but that's really not kind of the extent of the knowledge that you need. Anything that you would need to know about Restreaming or commentating, we are more than happy to help you figure that out. Um, so I highly recommend that. I joined the Restream team myself after really just a few months of playing this. I, I was just kind of like, I think I could do this. And uh, now I've been, I've Restreamed a lot of our matches. So, uh, you know, if you if you have interest in that, I definitely highly encourage it. Spiel is over, I promise. <laughs> uh, thank you, Solaris. It's definitely, I mean, we're always happy to see new people. There's just so much to learn about the enterprise and so much to talk about and i enjoy talking to people who are learning it themselves just because i find the game incredibly fun i found it fun when i was taking me four to five hours to clear a seed because i wanted to go and check everything and open every box i found it incredibly fun when i was taking only a couple hours to go and clear seeds when it got less fun i started getting into races because it encouraged me to play in a more fun way and it's just a very fun randomizer to me there's a lot to go and see and board based the developers does a lot to go and add to it we have just added version 4.3 which um the april fools flags the so-called wacky flags add some very interesting things as well if you want to go and see some very different free enterprise yeah there are 30 i think there are 30 yeah there's still t 32 different wacky flags that all just do very wildly different things and i kind of have to say it we we definitely give the devs a lot of credit, but it, it like it can't be understated just how much work Boardface has put into the programming of this game and the admin team in general have put into um, testing and developing this game and uh, organizing this tournament. Uh, so also a really huge shout out to them as well. We, we would not have a show of this caliber or a game of this quality without them. That's definitely the community also goes into gives a lot of assistance as well just going in being around and talking about the game and sharing it with so many different people it goes and it's a really big thing and i'm happy to go and have so many people to go who come out and enjoy it and listen to it and being part of the admin team itself is a big privilege so thank you everyone as part of the community for going and making this as good as it is e. and then sometimes we ask for playable gold as and rivers just gives a Eye rolling NBA gif. We've uh Golbez is not vanilla, he is not coming to this game, please. Not at all. <laughs> I'm almost sorry I put that out in the ether, but I I just sort of had to <laughs> I, I had to poke that. <laughs> uh poke that out there. But speaking of poke, we see that uh Canonary House Whip is continuing to go through this aromas fight, going through with uh Honestly, three of the best characters in the game, Cecil, Kane, and Rosa. Rosa being the white mage that gained so much MP or HP and just great casting stats. Kane and Cecil going and getting a lot of HP and just being able to tank those big bangs. Cecil having his holy swords. Rocks are falling, but we know who's falling harder? Zeromus. Zeromus is down and we are we have our second place finisher with Kanonori Housewife. GG's Kanonori Housewife. Uh, that was a bit of a rude start, wasn't it? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I lost that seed in the first 20 minutes. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Penguinator is, like, really, really good at this randomizer. And, uh, as soon as I started struggling with Plague and Bygen, I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> he, he is definitely a good runner. I'm not going to go and dis uh, disagree with that, but that was... That seed really... You got a lot of rude bosses early that said, you know what you need to be able to do? Damage. Do you know what this team can't do? Damage. And what's even worse is I had Titan on Rydia and then I get Plague, immune to, uh, immune to Quake. <laughs> you get Best. Mylon Z, immune to Quake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah Mylon Z floating. We, we didn't mention this. Mylon Z does fly, so he's immune to Quake. Oh, I did get the uh, the one bit of luck. I got the yellow dragon spawn from the trapdoor. That's super rare. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. I'd actually never seen that. Yeah, that's a super, super rare spawn. Uh, I think it's a certain trapdoor, like the trapdoor before uh, the darkness crystal is always a uh, yellow dragon. I think that room was the light sword room, and that one also has a yellow dragon, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, my agility was not set up for reflect strats there, so I'm like, eh, I've, I've lost anyway, I'm just gonna do it the hard way. <laughs> I mean, Crystal, uh, XL Cecil is definitely a good person to have in your team. Yeah. Um, so, I'm slowly getting better. The first tournament I did, I had zero wins. The second tournament I did, I had one win. And this tournament, I have two wins. So my hope is by next tournament, I will get three wins. But definitely, I mean, Steady Progress is good, especially this community is really good. So I'm going to say making headway against it at all is an is a astonishing improvement just because of how continuously this community gets better and better. There is a lot of scary runners, so no shame in going and taking losses to the field that we have. It is, it's a real scary field. Yeah, uh, abs absolutely. And, and I want to say that um, I, I really like that you identified where in the seed that um, trouble showed up that might have lost time for you, because um, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Penguinator was sort of able to power through those fights a lot faster, just with slightly different setup. Um, and if you go back and watch, you'll kind of see what exactly he did to kind of make those easier on himself. And then um, we were saying earlier, you know, in, in this randomizer, um, you take one small advantage and you snowball it into a bigger advantage because he was then able to find his grind earlier, which was then able to make let him get through checks faster. So, I mean, there was kind of a wide gap at the end in time, but like kind of the way that you two went through, I think was actually very competitive. And the way that you found the pink tail where you found it um, was a check that um, Pegmanator left on the table for quite a while because he went to the moon instead and found go mode on there. So um, it, the, the the times between you two were really very competitive. It was just kind of what happened that sort of broadened the distance based on that early advantage. So I'm really glad that you identified that. Uh, I think my biggest mistake, well, is, is basically hesitating. And the worst thing you can do in a randomizer is stand still. And I kept going back on for back and forth on whether I wanted to take that Ashura on because I only had one Star Veil, so I couldn't double reflect. But I also had I knew there was an Elven Bow down there, and I probably should have not hesitated and just gone for it. Um, but then I went around and I looked for Star Veils, and that ate up a bunch of time because they were in the last shop I looked at. Um, the other thing was. If I had done that, I probably would have had exit on Cecil, so I wouldn't have had to walk out of the the um, Cave Magnus because um, oh. I had no exits, so I had to walk out of there. So yeah, that one hesitation kind of snowballed into about 15 minutes I could have saved. And that's very easy with... Some seeds can be very hard to like, you know, you have your standard plan. I want to go and do Antland, I want to go and do Hobbs, I want to go and do these checks. And then you go and get stymied by a boss, and it's just, well, this team isn't getting up for deals that I really want for my Cecil, or it's just going slowly, so that's easy to go and just get a bit stuck on, and yeah, you also just had some unfortunate set of things, just some unfortunate, Bygen did not go and treat you nearly as 
uh, well as he treated penguin eaters, so you went and took away there, which... Again, small things that didn't go and do a lot, but they definitely went and... It's definitely easy to go and get flustered early on with a start like that, because you you had no damage. You started with Team's Hero damage. Well, I did have damage, but the only damage I had wasn't useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm well aware of what I did wrong. Um, knowing what you did wrong is the first step. Correcting it's a little more difficult. <laughs> uh, it's it's always this. The, that is definitely not a hard, easy start. Even getting to ready was a hard fight. So I am. That is definitely something you're gonna be happy with. As just DKC and Rosa with a staff is not a start you want. No. That is something that it's very easy to get. I would be tilted by that start as well, to be honest, because I would just. Where's my damage? Yeah, I was very happy to find the the life sword or the light sword in the sewers. That was a big help. Yeah, that uh, Hangler peaked that earlier, which was a small thing that gave him an advantage in that Fagin fight because he was able to go and push that. So it's just Hangler also had a lot of good luck for him or good things pay out. I mean, Hangler is just a very very good player. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. He is definitely. <laughs> He is a champion of one of these tournaments for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he's been in the brackets many, many times, so. Um, I think that's about all for me. I'm just going to say uh, I, I am slowly getting better with each tournament, so I'm pretty happy about that. My goal for the next one will be three wins. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's putting on the tournament. It's been super fun both to watch and to play in, and I really appreciate the entertainment. And uh, Free Enterprise is a great community, and it's been a great time. Uh, I will see y'all next time, and uh, thanks for having me. Thank you thanks for so much. <laughs> God, sorry, we're both just excited to thank you. Uh, thank you so much for putting on uh, a really good show, and uh, and thank you for that shout out. I yeah, I love the community too. So thanks so much. It really is hey. a great community. I will see y'all in the chat for the next race. Sounds good. Have a great evening. And uh, with that, I do believe that is the end of our restream. We are going to be sending you all over to Eldritch Mecca, who is doing a charity stream of Free Enterprise. So please go over there and give him your love. Uh, please do not go and spoil any results of this race, as some people may be wishing to go and look at the watch this and be surprised by the results so just let them know that this is a good one yeah and the the charity he's donating all of his um bits and subs to is able gamers this is a charity um looking to help people with disabilities to find better accessibility uh for uh gamers with disabilities to be able to play our games so uh definitely a great charity go check uh, go check eldritch mecca out you know maybe help if you feel like it sort of a thing but um yeah with that, uh, kind of it for me. No puns in my mind. Just uh, have a good night. Is a punishing race enough? We, I think we're all out. Have a great evening. It would help if I kick off the raid <laughs> before <laughs> that. Airtime. Airtime. Okay. Have a good night, y'all. Have a good evening. <laughs>